Which eucalypt is kind of just everywhere? Eucalyptus camaldulensis. As the tropical north floods with the yearly monsoons, as deep gorges and dry riverbeds cut through the arid central deserts, and as the cool temperate southern coastline endures yet another storm, this is the one tree that is ever present all over this great continent. The river red gum or Eucalyptus comorgulensis is one of Australia's most recognisable trees, and for good reason. It is the most widely distributed of all the eucalypts. The only places where you can't find the river red gum are in Tasmania and the southwest of Western Australia. With such an expansive range and covering such vastly different environments, there is no surprise that there is seven subspecies of this absolutely legendary tree. In biological classification, the term subspecies is referring to one of two or more populations of a species living in different areas. They differ from one another by having slightly different morphological characteristics, like maybe different shaped leaves. If we take a look at these subspecies on the map, we can easily see that they're divided up into their respective regions. Subspecies Reflugans is endemic to the Pilbara of Western Australia. Subspecies Obtusa is a large group found in the tropical north of Australia, while subspecies Simulata is a much smaller group only found on some rivers in Cape York Peninsula. Subspecies Acuta travels down the east coast all the way into New South Wales. From there, it's over to subspecies Camorgulensis. This larger group is the dominant eucalypt along the Murray-Darling River system. Subspecies Minima is endemic to South Australia and is the group found in the famous Flinders Ranges. Subspecies Arida grows in the vast arid regions and has the widest distribution of all the subspecies. This is the subspecies that you'll find around Alice Springs. And what does that say? Epic tree montage? While these trees can form dense forests, there's some scientific studies that indicate that the river red gum has a secret weapon to suppress the growth of other plants. Hashtag no shrubs. The river red gum produces a water soluble chemical, which is washed from its leaves by rain. These chemicals inhibit the growth of other plants, possibly so that the river red gum has a better chance of survival in times of drought. This phenomenon is called alleopathy. These chemicals are then washed away during times of flood, allowing then for the germination of river red gum seedlings. This fully sick mechanism ensures that seedlings don't germinate when times are dry and when they would compete with adult trees for that precious water resource. While these trees inhibit the growth of other plants, they seem perfectly adapted to become homes for just about everything else. It's super easy to see that in the drier environments like here on the winding banks of the Fink River in Central Australia, river red gums provide the vast majority of habitat structures for all nest building and hollow dependent wildlife. Just as the majestic top tiered wedgetail eagle builds its massive nest on its branches, so does the humble budgie and the tiny dusky wood swallow make their homes in the hollows of these trees. Even to my amazement, itty bitty micro bats like these rather pretty lesseters long eared bats make their homes in these trees. They're called micro bats because they're small. What also amazes me is that the river red gum provides necessary habitat for fish as well. In drier regions like the Flinders Ranges, you can easily see how the roots and lower trunks become exposed over time with erosion. Well, these same exposed roots also exist in the more permanent water systems too. These complex shapes provide a place of refuge and breeding habitat to many fish species. 
The snags formed by their roots or when an entire tree falls into the river are vitally important parts of our river ecosystems. There is no other species of tree that reaches far into our culture like the river red gum does. Just one example of how the river red gum has featured heavily in our country's history is when Harold Sesno, a famous photographer, visited the Flinders Ranges in 1937. He took this incredible photo entitled The Spirit of Endurance. Okay, sure, it looks kind of lame now, but for all you little whippersnappers out there, this was taken 83 years ago, and that's about 82 years older than TikTok. For a bit of context, this is just after World War I, and Australia had just been through about a decade of the Great Depression. Australia needed a symbol of strength. Australia needed something to quantify that never give up spirit. And this mighty tree provided. 83 years on, in a period of global pandemic and financial uncertainty, are we as a nation again in need of a symbol of natural strength and endurance? Luckily for all Australians, this exact tree is still standing in the Flinders Ranges. This individual tree had survived in the hardest of environments long before says no in those troubled times. And 83 years later, it is still going strong. Steeped in folklore, this tree is an essential part of our shared culture. It provides shelter and a great place to camp with our friends and family as we enjoy the great outdoors. I say that we as Australians have a connection to this tree like no other. I'm also Steve from The Tree Projects and you keep on duking. Aliopium. So it's 2020 and we at The Tree Projects here are going to be releasing a range of eucalypt media all throughout the year. What you can do is have a think about your favourite eucalypt and enter it into the eucalypt of the year 2020. One. Thanks to Eucalypt Australia. Also there's, uh, there's two links you can also click and a subscribe button as well. So uh, yeah, click them.